Welcome to Our Hope, a production of Chosen People Ministries. On this podcast, you will hear inspiring testimonies, learn about messianic apologetics, and discover God's plan for Israel and you. Wherever you're listening, we hope you lean in, listen closely, and be blessed. If God is good, then why do we suffer? This is a question humans have pondered for thousands of years. We we serve a God who is sovereign and has the power to stop suffering, but many times he allows it. When we endure personal trials, such as losing a job, going through a divorce, or weathering chronic illness, it can be hard to hold on to our faith. On this episode, we are going to discuss how suffering and faith can coexist and how to see God's goodness in all circumstances. Joining us are two very special guests, Kim Sarasky and Carissa Kerstetter. Both have suffered in unique ways and they have seen God move in the midst of their trials. And we're also going to invite Nicole Vaca, our co-host, to to be a part of that conversation as well as she walks through her own journey. Uh, So... I introduce you to the host of the podcast, Abe Vasquez. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome usually, to our hope, Abe. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I, usually Nicole does that part, but because we're including her as part of the discussion, uh, I thought it would be good for me to sort of set her up. Well, everyone, it's so good to have you. It's so good to be back for another episode. Um, you know, this is a a pretty tough episode. I think we all go through different levels of suffering um, we all go through our own journeys. Um, I know I've gone through very specific journeys with my wife, um, and, and I've talked about that, and we'll talk about that in a future episode. But, you know, there was one thing I think that was close to especially Nicole's heart. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, it's this idea of suffering long term, chronic illness, things that just kind of they're in your life for a long time. And that was just a, a topic that I don't think is addressed a lot within our community. Um, and there are a lot of parallels that we're going to point to um, just just in terms of looking at the Jewish people, looking at the suffering and the long, long-term long suffering they've gone through. We're going to make some parallels to you know the suffering of the Jewish people. And we're going to dig into that a little bit more. But for now, uh, let, let's just dive in. Uh, so we have today Kim and Carissa. And uh, Nicole, you're already here, so uh, yes. <laughs> thanks for always being here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so here's a question for all three of you, because Nicole, I don't think you've answered this question. Um, okay. What is your favorite food? Carissa, why don't we start with you? Uh, I laughed when I saw this question coming because I feel like you threw me right in the deep end. I know it's supposed to be a, a light, fun icebreaker, but... Uh, I know I'm not alone, and Nicole and, and Kim will understand when I answer. I can't eat any of my favorite foods anymore. A few years ago, I might have told you pizza or um, great corned beef sandwich from my favorite deli in the Detroit area. But now uh, my answer is I'm stuck between things like roasted cauliflower and garlicky Brussels sprouts. Well, those are still delicious. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I can I can also like understand because I have celiac and so I can't uh-huh. have pizza. I can't have the sandwich either. It had uh-huh. to all be gluten free and you know, this gluten gluten free has gotten better, but mm-hmm. it's not yeah. quite the same. Yeah. It's, not the same. <laughs> it's not the same. You know, cauliflower pizza is not a New York slice. So No. <laughs> Remind me to send you like a gluten free pizza crust recipe. Oh yes, please do. <laughs> Kim, what about you? Well, I too, uh, when I first read this, when I was reading through the script and I said, favorite food, do they know (laughs) um, what's going on with my digestive system? Um, So I absolutely uh, echo exactly what Carissa said. Um, And you learn to like different things and you learn to like new things. Although I have been been denied pizza and burgers and all the things that I loved for so many years. Um, I now have learned to love rice and salmon and other things. And so I would say that probably salmon is my favorite food at this time because 
I can digest it easily. Yeah. And, um, and it, it, it gives me the nourishment that I need similar to probably what Carissa is talking about with the Brussels sprouts and the cauliflower. So it's good that we can adapt. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and Nicole. Yeah. So similar situation here. Um, I used to love a good New York slice of pizza. Can't have that anymore. Um, and hamburgers, but uh, nowadays, I eat eggs almost every day, which Abe knows. Um, and, <laughs> and Cheerios. <laughs> and Cheerios. I love Cheerios. And I also like my grilled chicken. So there actually, grilled chicken is probably my my favorite right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we're all in good company. I, I can... <laughs> We're the non-pizza people. We're the non-pizza non -pizza people. <laughs> so sad. So this is the saddest episode <laughs> of our hope. <laughs> so, Kim, in a minute or so, talk about your work with uh, Chosen People Ministries, how you're connected, um, what you do. So my husband uh, came on staff as a missionary in 2006. And for those of us that are part of the ministry, know that when a spouse joins, um, the other spouse is <laughs> included in the bunch, even though we're not officially on staff. Uh, so I've served in multiple capacities yeah. within chosen people in that support role, obviously with my husband's ministry, going out and speaking in churches. Um, he also is a leader of Messianic congregation. Uh, so I aid and assist with that. And I also serve on the leadership advisory team for um, chosen people ministries as a spouse representative. Wonderful. Wonderful. Krissa? I'm in a similar position to Kim in that I'm not on staff and Vincent is, but we began working together and I very much consider myself a, a part of his team, part of the team. Um, we began working with chosen people in 2014 and since the very beginning, it's in our heart to show the love of Yeshua, especially to Israeli travelers, Israeli backpackers through hospitality and practical service. Great. So, Nicole, why don't you just start us off and briefly talk about why why jump into this topic? Why bring Kim and Carissa? Um, bring us into your thinking a little bit. Yeah. So um, I just think this is a topic that I don't hear about enough in the world of Christianity or Messianic Judaism. You know, we talk sometimes about like terminal illness, but chronic illness is kind of at its own boat. You know, it's a little bit different. It kind of just makes life annoying. Mm -hmm. And uh, it can be frustrating because, you know, in Christian circles, we focus a lot about God's power to heal. And so it's like, how do we how do we still push through when we don't get the healing? And so I, I wanted to encourage people who are dealing with this kind of thing and suffering in general. You know, we all we're all suffering with something, even if we don't have any health issues. And so it's a very relevant topic right now. So for each of you why don't you tell me a quick version of your story about what it is that you're why you can't have pizza <laughs> carissa why don't you start us off okay um without giving you any of the technical labels i have a number of chronic illnesses and seem to keep collecting them uh, every time it seems i spend more time with the doctor i get a new diagnosis, diagnosis, and um, they don't cancel each other out, so I just keep collecting them. And um, some of them are genetic, and I was born with, and only have learned about in, in the past few years. And others I've developed along the way. I haven't always been um, or considered myself ill. It really, really started to change my life in 2011, and has gone through ups and downs since then. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I was diagnosed with uh, Crohn's disease, which is an autoimmune disease in uh, 1999. Mm. So I've been with, I've been uh, suffering from this disease for many years. However, before being diagnosed, I suffered as well. I just did not know that's very common with autoimmune diseases. We have all these symptoms and they don't add up. Mm. You don't know what they are. They seem isolated, but they're learning now that they're connected and i'm sure that that's what's going on mm -hmm. with carissa uh i do collect uh illnesses as well because i also have ulcerative colitis as well mm. so crohn's disease ulcerative colitis and i have chronic uh severe anemia mm. and 
the combination of those three is um, it's very difficult at times to just function. Mm -hmm. Wow. And Nicole? Yeah. So I started having issues with my stomach when I was 16 years old, but I was not diagnosed with Crohn's disease until I was 28. So for 12 years, you know, I didn't have the right symptoms at the right time. And so they didn't do the right tests. And I kind of just went up and down between seasons of remission and seasons of being very sick. Mm -hmm. um, so I finally got diagnosed uh, at the end of 2019 when I went for a capsule endoscopy. Mm -hmm. so. so Kim, this is a question for you. Let's let's go back a little bit. Um, I think people who are listening who may also have some uh, sort of illness or a situation that's kind of long-term suffering might wonder, why is there suffering to begin with? Why why do we even have to go through this? So how did suffering come to earth and, and why is it still here? Well, that is a question that mankind has asked for a long time. Um, and it's in the Bible. It starts um, clearly in Genesis 3. It talks about the fall of man and when sin entered the world. There is a clear connection between sin and suffering. Mm -hmm. um, if you read through the verses, um, Genesis 3 states that suffering and evil entered our world after sin did, which is explained also in Revelations 21. And if you go to Revelations 20, it shows that when sin leaves the world, when God removes it from the earth, so does mm -hmm. suffering and evil. So any explanation for suffering and evil has to be rooted in sin. There's a direct correlation between the two. It can't be anything else. Chris, I, I can imagine that, you know, as you're reading the word and studying the word, you can probably relate with Job um, a lot. So when we read in the book of Job, um, we know he was a righteous man, but we also know that he suffered terribly. But in spite of all that suffering, he remained faithful. So what can we learn about suffering and God's goodness from from Job? So I don't think that you can have a, a discussion about suffering in the Bible without talking about Job. There's so much that you can take away from his story or rather the story of God's relationship with Job. But my biggest takeaway definitely has to be recognizing that walking in faithfulness to God does not mean that we will be exempt from suffering or live a pain-free life. Um, mm -hmm. the measure of our faith doesn't determine the measure of our suffering. And that's a great comfort to me personally, to know that it isn't necessarily a lack of faith in my life that has put me in the position I'm in. Um, God actually says of Job in Job chapter one, verse eight, there is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, fearing God and turning away from evil. It was, in fact, as you'll find, if you read the story of Job, and if you haven't, you absolutely should. It was because of his great faith that God allowed Satan to test him with all kinds of pain and trials to prove that Job would not curse God in the face of suffering. Mm -hmm. So, Nicole, question for you. Uh, Isaiah 53, it's a well-known prophecy about Yeshua, the suffering servant who died to atone for the sins of humanity. We all, uh, most of us know. And one verse that stands out is verse 5, but he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening of our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. In your opinion, how does our Messiah's suffering give us hope to endure the suffering we're, we're talking about here? It's a tough question, but as I think about it, knowing that by his scourging we are healed, even if I don't get my healing in this lifetime, I know that this is not going to last forever because I have eternal life through Jesus. And so I have an eternity to look forward to with no pain and no suffering and no sickness. And I can eat at the wedding feast of the lamb, anything that's on the table and not get sick. And that's amazing. <laughs> so that's one way I'm encouraged by this, but also just knowing that Jesus, uh, when he was here, he suffered even before the crucifixion, he suffered with 
reputation issues. You know, the Pharisees didn't like him. He was persecuted. He was blamed for a lot of things he didn't do. He didn't change to please people, and he didn't change because he wanted to go the easy route or, you know, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, you know, he prayed that God would let this cup pass from him, but then he said, not my will, but yours be done. So Mm -hmm. he gives us an example of how to just keep pushing through in this life, knowing that, yes, it's going to be hard. There's going to be trouble. We're going to struggle at times, but God is sovereign and he's in control. And so if he allows something and he is good, so if he allows something, there has to be a reason why. And so it encourages me to just keep trusting God's sovereignty as I go through what I go through. We'll be right back. During these difficult times, we know how hard it is to hold on to hope, and we want you to know that Chosen People Ministries is here for you. If you have any prayer requests, our prayer team is standing by to receive them. You can submit your request at chosenpeople.com forward slash pray. Again, that's chosenpeople.com forward slash pray. Shalom, this is Mitch Glazer with Chosen People Ministries. I know that you're concerned about what's happening in the Ukraine right now. Russia has been on the attack and it seems unrelenting. So many people are suffering. And among that group of people who are suffering are well over 200,000 Ukrainian Jewish people. We've already sent aid, food, water, all sorts of materials as well as Chosen People missionaries to the border between Ukraine and Poland. And we're having an active ministry there right now. We're also in touch with the 10 or 12 congregations that we work with in Ukraine itself. And we've been sending in a little bit of funding where we can get it in, but keeping in touch with them. So please pray for the Ukraine and for Chosen People Ministries. Question for anyone. Does suffering have any purpose? So I would say that the simple answer is yes, of course. I think that everything has purpose. Um, If I had to give a little more in-depth answer, I would say that the scriptures tell story after story of those who have suffered and have been tested, and that the pages of the Bible are filled with what was produced from it, which is good and bad. Um, But it talks about that in 1 Peter 1, verse 7. And it explains that these tests, when they are surrendered to God, um, what God does with those things, it helps to develop, increase our faith, and to show proof of our faith Mm -hmm. when we choose to give that to him. And the scripture says, so that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Messiah Yeshua. And in my experience, the greater the suffering, the greater the opportunity for growth. Um, He has proven this to me over and over through it all. We can choose to take the opportunity or we can choose not to. And God always gives us a choice, even in this. Um, So it's hard to understand uh, sometimes, and it's definitely not an easy process. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's true that there is pain and suffering, whether it's physical, mental, or emotional. And because of that, there is always a great cost for that growth. Mm -hmm. I just want to add real quick, um, some of the most like spiritually fruitful times in my life were times of suffering. And I know that if I didn't get my Crohn's diagnosis, I wouldn't have really learned how to cook (laughs) and I wouldn't have really learned how to rest. And so Mm -hmm. I did learn a lot during this season. Carissa, as you keep going to the doctors and they keep kind of giving you more and more, I guess, bad news, can you see the purpose in this season you're in? Can you see the purpose of um, the suffering that you continue to go through while you're in it? Absolutely. Um, Certainly I have days that that's not as clear to me. I have Mm -hmm. have my dark days. Um, 
Uh, I've had a lot of them. And I've had plenty of days that I've doubted God's goodness and really had to wrestle through these questions myself and go back to things I've written down or call up people to speak hard truth into my life. But yes, absolutely. Uh, I see purpose mm-hmm. in my suffering and in the suffering of, of the world. I'm a deep thinker, so I I spiral down these questions and I have to come back continually to the root question of that we all probably have to face it at least once in our life of how could a good God who loves me, who loves the world, allow so much suffering? And I think that Mm -hmm. has to be at the forefront of many people's minds right now with all that's going on in the world, um, especially right now with the war in Ukraine and so many people suffering and being displaced. And for me, I have to come back to the answer that not only can a good God allow suffering, but that it is God's goodness and grace to us to allow suffering. And that's, that's a hard statement to make and it might baffle people, Yeah, but it's founded first on the belief that there is no greater good for humanity than knowing God and being in relationship with him. So anything Mm -hmm. that hinders our relationship and fellowship with God is an obstacle to our ultimate good. If, Mm -hmm. as we said, suffering is a result of disobedience to God, bringing sin into the world and God is only good and holy. There is no evil in him. First John 1, 5 says, God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If sin had not entered the world, there would be no evil, no suffering, no darkness. Likewise, in God's presence, there's no evil, no suffering, no darkness. So experiencing these things give, gives us a very stark contrast darkness in the world the darkness of suffering contrasted against god's perfect light peace hope and joy and the darkness of suffering showcases god's light and by showing us everything that he is not it can serve to Mm. to seek him in the light and we we know this is true when there are times of great suffering Churches and synagogues are never more full than in times of great suffering, in times of war and unrest, like we see right now. We never pray more as individuals than when we're going through an illness or a loved one is in the hospital or we have lost a loved one or lost a job and we're going through a hard time. We never ask questions more like, what is the purpose of life? Is there a God? What comes after this life? But when we're in times of war and grief, like the world is experiencing right now. I never really thought of it that way. Like I knew that was a truth, um, but I never thought of it in that way of, you know, there's suffering in the world. It's evil. It's dark, but it's sort of everything that God is not. And to Mm -hmm. then experience what God is when he you know, when he returns, I think that is so encouraging because it's just like, I I can think about all the suffering that I've gone through personally and all the suffering in the world and how it makes me feel, how upset it makes me feel, you know, Mm -hmm. yes, the injustice in Ukraine, the injustice in so many places and how I get angry thinking about it. But that same anger is just going to be sort of transformed into joy once it's all done, once it's, once there's peace on earth, like, wow. Like I never really put those two realities up against each other. Um, but yeah, that, that, that is awesome. So you both serve in ministry um, alongside your partners. And there have been times where you persevered in your work despite the challenges you faced. What advice would you give to someone who is serving the Lord while going through a hard season? And Nicole, I, I of course, include you in that as well. Um, I would encourage them to just cross into God as much as they can in their lives. Um, It's a very simple answer, but it's very difficult to do. Um, 
The times that I pressed into God rather than pulling away from Him have been the greatest growth in my relationship with Him and His presence in my life. Uh, but I have learned that coming to the one who's doing the work in my life and allowing me to suffer is probably harder than anything. Our natural tendency is to draw away and flee from the source mm -hmm. of pain. And if God is allowing suffering in our lives, it's only natural to want to do that, to pull away. But I've learned that God, who also allows the pain mm -hmm. that might cut me deeply, is also the only remedy for that suffering. And it's a very interesting, um, it's a very difficult thing to explain to people when they don't understand God, because we get questions often from people, you know, why do you believe in God? You know, you know, why would you choose? It's similar to Job's wife, you know, just curse him and die. You know, why are you, why are you being faithful to this God that's allowing you to suffer? And it's a testimony to the world when we do that, when we persevere when we press into him, when we choose him over the the resentment or the bitterness or the um, the lack of hope, all the things that you can have when you have chronic illness for a long period of time, there are valleys, there are peaks, but there are a lot of valleys that you will walk through. And um, it can feel hopeless at times. That's why your relationship with God is the anchor right. that you hold on to. It is, it is what sustains you and carries you through those valleys. He carries us. So that's my answer is that mm -hmm. it's simple, but not simple. Yeah. Pressing into God when we're hurting is probably one of the hardest <laughs> things I've ever had to do in my life. I have a two-parter question. Um... So this one specifically for Kim and Carissa, how, what, what, what has been the role of your spouse in your, in your suffering? How have they supported you through this? Um, talk us through that a little bit. Well, you've given me a golden opportunity to brag on my amazing husband. Um, <laughs> I didn't, did not know what I was getting when I married this guy, but God really <laughs> knew ahead of time what I needed and he would be uh, an incredible support through all that we were about to go through as a married couple. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. My husband, BJ, has truly been the embodiment of Jesus in my life. He mm -hmm. first and foremost seeks a relationship with the Lord himself and encourages that for me. But he lives that out practically every day as he serves me and now our toddler in very practical ways. Mm -hmm. He's gracious when I'm grumpy, <laughs> when I'm having uh, <laughs> one of the dark days that I've talked about. He's there to remind me of truth when I'm doubting. He's mm -hmm. puts up with me when that, that doubt and fear and pain comes out of anger. Um, and does so great. Mm -hmm. He's quick to forgive. And, and um, it, these are vulnerable things to share, but I, I think I won't be alone in admitting that when we go through hard times, um, not the prettiest sides of ourselves tend to come out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in the practical ways also, he shows up for the doctor's appointments and helps me navigate the medical jargon that I can't understand and mm. um, even go so far as to eat all of the different foods that I eat without expecting me to cook a separate meal for him mm -hmm. or uh, bring pizza into the house when he knows it'll make me sad. <laughs> wow. Can I um just add on to that? Um, yeah, absolutely. Because I I do echo exactly what she's saying. I have, I we have the same husband apparently because my husband is very uh, <laughs> uh, he he is a is a gift from God. I don't um, I cannot imagine walking through this without him. Um, but I'd like to say something about to the to the spouse, not just being grateful for who I have. Um. Mm -hmm. 
and to that person that is walking alongside the person that is going through the suffering, and especially if it's a chronic illness, I would say that you may never understand the pain that your loved one is going through, and that's okay. Um, you know, I don't expect those in my life to know exactly what it's like, and I wouldn't want them to. Um, I wouldn't wish this on anyone. I would suggest that um, if you are in that situation, that you give your loved one space that they need and be available to help when asked and just love them. The one you love is going through so much and they may not be able to let you know or even understand what they need at that moment. Uh, my husband is so patient mm -hmm. with me whenever I have a flare up from Crohn's and he gives mm -hmm. me space to work through all the feelings, my symptoms, my limitations that I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. However, he helps me when I ask and this applies to all types of pain and suffering, not just chronic illness, uh, because we all process it differently. We need to just be a support. It is a hard road for a support person. Um, and often they do get shadowed um, and overlooked because especially when you're married, you are one flesh. And what hurts me right. hurts him and vice right. versa. So that support system is just an amazing gift from god if you have it i'm you know i'm grateful yeah. that i do i want to add that one of the most important things that i think my husband and i have learned or really i should say my family and i have learned because um both my family and my husband's family really understand and live this out well is that god gave me this illness to steward and my perspective really shifted when I recognized that my illness is not a hindrance from the uh, from living out the other purposes that God has given me but rather is a purpose in and of itself God has given me steward mm. my work my passions my skills my family my mm. community and also my illness it is a part of my calling, mm. but not only that, it is something that God has asked my loved ones to steward with me. And I have struggled through all of this with guilt that my mm. illness has devastated not only my life, but my husband's. So many of our dreams mm. and plans have been shattered by my illness and it very often feels like my fault. He would never, mm -hmm. would ever imply that or make me feel that way, but it's in my own heart and mind to feel that way. But when I mm -hmm. shift my perspective to remember that God has asked me to steward this well and has also asked my husband and the people around me to steward this well, it shifts my mindset from that of a victim to that of uh, someone who is called to mm -hmm. live through something well and to see what God wants to do with it and how he will use it not only in my life for, but for his greater purposes. How can he use it mm -hmm. to teach my community something? Um, yeah. For example, by That's awesome. simply stepping into this role and saying, yes, I have suffered and I don't have to hide that suffering, but to say that in faith, in the face of that, that suffering, God has been good to me and I will worship him and I will praise mm -hmm. him is to let God be glorified through my experience. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So Nicole, slightly different question. What role does community play in our suffering? And if you had, I mean, you have a mic right now, but if you had a big megaphone right now, if you could speak to all the people who are in touch or in relationship with those who are suffering with mm -hmm. chronic illness, long, you know, some sort of long-term suffering, what would you say to them? Um, how can they, how should they support um, those going through this? 
Well, I think there's the role of community for those who are suffering. I know in my life, being around other people who are going through something and can resonate with what I'm going through has definitely helped me. And that's why I'm grateful for Kim and I'm grateful for Carissa. And I'm grateful for everybody I meet who's dealing with something, even if it's not the same exact thing I'm dealing with, just because they get it. You know, they know that it's not always happy, it's not always easy. And so oftentimes whatever they've learned in their walk has encouraged me in my own walk and has helped strengthen my faith when I'm, you know, at a low point. And then being around people who haven't gone through what I've gone through still encourages me and is still important to me because I believe that we need each other in the body. And, you know, we've talked about this a little bit in the episode with Scott about community. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot we can all learn from each other. And that's why I really like what uh, Carissa said, just the fact that maybe we're bringing attention to something that a lot of people out there are dealing with that maybe some people are just not familiar with. And so we're helping equip other believers as well in their ministry or in their uh, in their walk whenever they meet people who are suffering, mm -hmm. just to have some knowledge of it and to understand a little bit what that person is going through. And I think the my overall message to community is uh, walk with that person who's suffering, sit with that person who's suffering, mm -hmm. um, ask what they need, but also, again, just listen. Oftentimes we just want to vent <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and maybe just have encouragement in our faith. I think it's easy to be there in the big moments when you know someone loses a family member or someone <clears throat> sort of has a... Um, uh, a terminal illness or, you know, things like that. But when you intentionally step into someone's life who has um, some sort of long-term suffering, it just changes things. It means so much more. Um, mm -hmm. I know, I know firsthand what that's like when, you know, I talk about my, my, my firstborn Araya, when we lost her, that was a big moment. Right. But I think there is a long suffering that comes with it because it's, yeah. there's not a day that I don't think about her and there's not a day where it's not painful for me. And so those who check in, those who um, remember her and honor her, those who walk with me even, you know, we're coming up on three years, crazy. Um, you know, those who sort of like are there with me throughout that, it just changes the relationship. That, that that friendship it just man it goes so deep it's so rock solid you know so i i hear that nicole for sure can i can i say something about the community yeah. as well because yes i know that Krista and i talked about her husbands and she did mention her family um you do get a support system especially with a chronic illness mm -hmm. you do need it and you know who those people are in your life you know like i have friends yeah. that will call and check on me um or they'll see me and they'll notice that uh, maybe i'm just not carrying myself well or something and they'll check in and they know or even just through um recent times that we've been in and they're checking in how are you doing are you okay mm -hmm. um you know i'm worried about you because of x y and z or whatever it really makes a difference yeah. when you have that community to surround you to support you mm -hmm. and not necessarily try to fix you <laughs> in the in mm -hmm. in the illness because uh that's one advice i would give to people i'm not looking for people to come and fix me i'm looking for people to support mm -hmm. me and love me through the process and um right. i appreciate that they want me to be better but I ultimately believe mm -hmm. in the sovereignty of God and his hand on my life. And if I'm to be healed, I will be healed. And if I, and if I'm not mm -hmm. healed until the world to come, I'm okay with that. It's hard for people to understand yeah. that sometimes, but the ones mm -hmm. that do, they are so valuable. They are gold to you. They, they are so important. You need those people in your life. If there's any people group who understand suffering, it's the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Um, there are, <laughs> you, you see it all over scripture, all over the history of the Jewish people for thousands of years, they've gone through seasons of suffering. So how can being aware of this suffering help us share the Messiah with the Jewish community? Well, I would say, I think that's a really big 
question and a really big answer. Um, probably could be a podcast in of itself. Um, but I would like to say that one of the things that exemplifies that how sweetness and um, suffering go hand in hand and the Jewish people really do understand that is with the bride and groom. I think that that was the first time it was really spoken to me and explained in a way um, because when the bride and groom drink from the wine glass, breaks the glass, it symbolizes the destruction of the temple. And people ask, well, why are we remembering this on such a beautiful occasion of a wedding? There's so much joy. Well, joy is tempered with sadness. And when you understand sadness, you understand joy. You can't understand the fullness of joy without understanding sadness. There has to be context. Mm. And so the Jewish people have done this well, right? They've been through history, have suffered greatly at the hands of others, choices they made personally for themselves. And, um, and they get it. They understand how that suffering, you do under, have to understand the gladness. And um, it's important that ritual to me, I just remember when we were getting married, under, understanding on a deeper level and wondering, well, why do we have to talk about this and understand these things? Um, mm -hmm. No matter how good things are, we need to remember that only God, only because of God, they are good. And that really is the core of all of that. And no matter how bad things get, there, there is always hope that we can turn to God. And the Jewish people have done that throughout history. Um, that is the primary message of the prophets throughout the Hebrew scriptures, that no matter how far we have turned away from God, he is always ready to forgive and accept us back. And that, in a nutshell, is the gospel message. And they they don't understand that, that, produce, that suffering that they have gone through is designed by God's hand to bring them to that, to that, uh, to the answer, which is Yeshua, mm -hmm. the, the answer of the goodness of God, the answer that he is the solution for all of that. It doesn't mm -hmm. take away the suffering, but the hope that we have in him is what sustains us and carries us all the way through. So as we wrap up, um, first of all, thank you, Kim, Carissa, and Nicole for being so vulnerable and talking um, with us about this. Can you briefly share a testimony of when God helped you in your suffering? Krista, why don't you go first? Absolutely. The time that I have in mind is actually not in relation to suffering through chronic illness, but suffering through the loss of a loved one. On mm. June 23rd in 2016, my husband and I woke up in our apartment in Tel Aviv, Israel, to 13 missed calls from my family. A few moments later, I learned that my 19-year-old brother, Levi, had gone to be with the Lord. I was in shock, um, fell hyperventilating onto the bathroom floor and couldn't bring myself to ask what had happened or when. I could only take the next breath. When I was finally able to pick myself up off the floor and breathe again, I went through the motions of getting ready, getting dressed, so that we could begin the process of getting back home to the States to be with my family. I walked out of the dark bedroom into the living area, which was flooded with light. I walked over to the windows like a zombie and looked out from the 20, 25th floor apartment over a bustling Israeli city and the sun literally sparkling on the water of the Mediterranean. And I haven't had many moments like this in my life, but in that moment, God spoke so clearly to my heart. He brought to mind the words of Ezekiel 37 about the Valley of Dry Bones, and I could almost hear him speak to me. Look at this city. This is proof that I keep my promises. I am the God of the resurrection. These were dry bones scattered across the earth, and I am bringing them from death to life. You will see Levi again because he is not dead, but alive. That's beautiful. Kim. Wow. Um, so I remember one day very clearly when God uh, really helped me in a most beautiful way. Um, 
I was struggling through a bad flare up and it had been several days of the suffering and I was not able to get out of bed. I couldn't eat. I was very weak. I had been praying for days for relief that God would heal me, just something that something would happen. And at that moment, I felt God speak to my heart to pray that I would feel his presence. He wanted me to change my prayer for healing to feeling his presence. And I did, and he answered it. I literally could feel his presence surround me and it comforted me. It was like he had his arms around me and I felt it, not just emotionally, not just mm. in a spiritual way. I physically could feel the presence of God enveloping my body and holding me. Now that may sound simple um, to some people for that to just be a prayer, but it truly was an intimate and powerful moment with him. That day, I feel that I learned that God mm. works with us in the suffering, every moment, every breath, mm. and not just through the suffering. He's with us through all of it in the intricate moment by moments of the suffering, not just from the beginning, not yeah. just at the end, but the whole process. And when you experience that kind of presence of God in the midst of that, it transforms and changes your life. That's awesome. Nicole, do you have something you want to share? So I mentioned earlier that the the reason I was diagnosed with Crohn's, the test that helped us find out that I had it was the capsule endoscopy, which I had in December of 2019. Mm -hmm. And when I signed the waiver for that test, I understood that there was a risk that the capsule could get stuck. It's basically you swallow a pill with a camera inside and it goes through your whole digestive tract. And so it got stuck and I was admitted to the hospital for six days and it was December. We were in the middle of end of year and it was a very difficult season for us as a team. And for six days, Abe forbade me from doing any work in the hospital. I had to rest the whole time I was there and I felt so useless. And I remember um, one night I was just walking around with my IV pole because, uh, you know, trying to avoid blood clots. And um, I remember just thinking to myself like, being in the hospital challenged my view of the value of human life because like, we often tend to think that the people who are accomplishing the most are the most valuable people, but that's not how God sees it. And as I was walking around, I thought about the fact that I don't have value because of what I do. I have value because of who I am and who God created me to be. And the fact that Jesus died for me shows how much value I have. And so that was something I, I learned that was huge <laughs> during that season. Ladies, thank you so much. This was, um, I didn't know what to expect walking into this episode, honestly. And I'm so i am so encouraged today. Um, there's so much that I picked up on and, and caught and heard. And I think our listeners are gonna be really encouraged listening to this. Um, so, so thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, it was an honor. Thank you. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will take his stand on the earth. Even after my skin is destroyed, yet from my flesh I shall see God, whom I myself shall behold, and whom my eyes will see, and not another. That's from Job 19, 25 through 27. Though suffering is difficult to endure and understand, we have hope in knowing that it will not last forever. Sometimes God allows our hardships for mysterious reasons, but in the midst of our trials, He is still sovereign and good. Furthermore, He understands how we feel. Our Messiah came to earth as a man and suffered for our sins so that we can look forward to eternal life with Him. When that day comes, we will suffer no more. Knowing this, Let's us put our trust in Yeshua and rely on His Spirit to help us persevere and press on in the race. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or give us a rating on Spotify. Let us know how this podcast has moved you. We would also love if you can share it on social media with your friends and family. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Our Hope featuring Kim Saraski and Carissa Kerstetter. This episode was produced and written by Nicole Vaca and edited by Grace Sweet. 
This episode was also made possible thanks to Dr. Mitch Glazer, Rachel Larson, Kyron Bautista, and John Bautista. I'm Abe Vasquez. Until next time. Thanks for listening to Our Hope. If you like our show and want to know more, check out ourhopepodcast.com or chosenpeople.com. You can also support our podcast by giving today at ourhopepodcast.com slash support. See you next time.